So now let's see. First of all, we should know that how pulpal conditions are different from periradicular conditions. So in pulpal conditions are more diffuse condition, right? When the patient is actually confused, maybe my this tooth is hurting or this tooth, I'm not sure, but I can still feel some pain is coming to my ear. The foot pains. Because as I told you, pulp has just fibers of pain. Pulp do not have what is called as proprioception. So proprioception is the positioning sense. Now PDL has the proprioception. The PDL fibers have this property. So the periodontal pain, the periradicular conditions, they are more localized. When the patient can actually pinpoint, yes, my this tooth is hurting. And a very common complaint for the periradicular condition, patient says, whenever I chew on this tooth, it hurts me. Along with that, you can see swelling, fever, pain, and loss of lamina dura atically. Very important feature. Now, if you see all these four conditions here, the first of all we have is AAP, acute apical periodontitis. So, what's happening in acute apical periodontitis? There's an inflammation of the PDL in the periradicular region. So, this AAP can be associated with a vital tooth or a non-vital tooth. So, vital tooth getting acute apical periodontitis can be just due to occlusal trauma or the habit of bruxism. So, if it is a vital tooth with AAP, you don't do RCT in a vital tooth. So, you are going to do some occlusal adjustments and AAP can become normal again in a vital tooth. But in a non-vital tooth, if you have the AAP, of course, you have to go for the RCT. So, tooth may be sensitive to percussion in acute apical periodontitis. Now, the next condition we have is acute periapical abscess. So, the first thing you should know that the tooth is non-vital here. It's a painful condition, an acute condition, and you will see pus around the apex, if you can see in the picture here. Now, how you differentiate between acute apical abscess and a lateral periodontal abscess? In lateral periodontal abscess that is formed on the lateral side of the root is always associated with the periodontal pocket. Only perio condition, the tooth is vital here. But in acute apical abscess, the tooth is definitely going to be non-vital plus you don't see any perio pocket that is associated. So that's how you can differentiate between acute apical abscess and lateral periodontal abscess. Now when we talk about CAP that is chronic apical periodontitis is a long-standing condition. So it becomes asymptomatic with time. The tooth is non-vital, negative per testing and plus you will see a periapical radiolucency here. So, three features non vital tooth, asymptomatic, and a periapical radiolucency. Now, there is a condition called as Phoenix abscess. So, Phoenix abscess is a condition when you have acute exacerbation of CAP. So, the CAP condition which is originally asymptomatic, it becomes suddenly symptomatic and painful for the patient. Then it becomes Phoenix abscess. So, Phoenix abscess is all the feature of CAP, the tooth uh, being dead, there is a large periapical idiolucency, except that in Phoenix abscess, the tooth is going to be painful. Now, the next condition we have is separative periradicular periodontitis. So, here it is suppuration. Suppuration is having the pus. Here also the tooth is going to be asymptomatic, the tooth is non-vital, periapical radiolucency. So how do you differentiate then between CAP and SPP? They look same. In SPP, important feature is that you have a draining sinus tract through which all the pus is draining out and making it an asymptomatic condition. So this is how you differentiate. So whenever in any endodontic question related, uh, you see a tooth with a draining sinus tract. Always remember the tooth is non-vital and the treatment is to do the RCT. And the last one is chronic focus carolizing osteomyelitis. Now, in this condition, the long-standing condition, when initially the bone was demineralized, but become remineralized over a period of time. So, excessive bone mineralization 
is seen here. The tooth is asymptomatic and the tooth is vital here. So the vital tooth, asymptomatic, you don't do anything. You just observe the case. 